All right, so welcome back to Jim Bob's garden. So what we're doing today is I'm gonna do some thinning. Now what I planted here is kale. Um, I'd had some trouble with kale seeds coming up for some reason. I think I must have just got a bad batch of seeds or what have you because everything came up on this one. Now obviously you see all this kale here and all this, this is a red Russian kale and this is lacinato or dinosaur kale. The problem is if I leave it like this, what's going to end up happening, none of it's going to grow very well. It'll grow, as you can see. I mean, I'm getting some growth, getting some tiny kale leaves, which are really good, especially the young ones. Um, the problem is you're not going to get the big, nice kale that you want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to thin them down. Now, I did not read the package on um, essentially how far apart they should be spaced and i'd be honest with you i don't really pay much attention to it anyway but i do know that if i don't thin it out it's not going to grow very well now knowing when i pulled up the other kale last year the root system was about yeah about yay big around so i'm going to try and leave uh, a kale plant about that far apart plus or minus a few six eight inches thereabouts and what i'll probably do actually you know what i want to do i'm going to do it a little smaller than that that way, if one of the plants doesn't make it, then I'll have a backup and I can always pull it out later and either replant it somewhere else or uh, just toss it and make it into compost. So with that being said, what we're going to do here is go ahead and pull a few. Now, you can either toss these in the uh, um, compost or you can try and replant them. Some things will replant, some things will not. Like I'm going to pull this big bunch right here. If I pull it carefully, you can see that I've got a good chunk of roots on there. All right, nice little kale plants. There's like three or four of them there. Take the small ones out. Now, there's several different sizes of this kale. Some of it's getting, that one's actually looking like it got eaten off. But some of it's getting like second and third sets of, of uh, leaves there. Oops, sorry, down here. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to plant it someplace. And we'll see if it takes. So you, essentially, you're just going to dig a hole with your finger and stuff it in there. And we'll see whether or not it comes back. Some will, some won't. Either way, it doesn't cost me anything. So there you go. Got another kale plant planted there. And we'll see if it does anything. If it doesn't, then it didn't cost me anything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and thin these out and I'll show you when I'm done the end result. Uh, one last note though, you got to be careful when you pull them out that you're only pulling the ones you want um, because when you pull on uh, a particular bunch of them or a singular one, you can end up pulling all of the uh, kale in the, in the vicinity out. So with that being said, I'm going to get this done and I will show you the results here in a little while. All right, another thing about, about actually um, uh, thinning things out, one of the things you can find, like right here, maybe you can see it, I've got a whole bunch of them packed in real tight. What will end up happening if you're not careful, when you go to pull it, you're going to pull all the dirt up around it because every little root comes up with um, some dirt on it. So what I do is I'll try and select the best one, all right, which is really hard to see. Like in here, I want one about there. And that's a nice tall specimen there. Looks like it's getting a little bit ahead of the rest of them. So that's what I want. So one of the things that helps to keep you from pulling dirt out around it, take your fingers and put it right around the plant you're saving. And then when you pull, it won't pull all the dirt out um, that you want to save that's right around that particular plant. So if you hold down on the ones you're trying to save, then you'll end up 
um, with a little more success and you don't have to do it like one little one uh, one little plant at a time All right. and then like I said what I'm doing here is I'm trying to save the better plants and I'm I'm leaving them about I don't know now they're about what three inches apart and I'm gonna end up wanting them around six inches apart maybe even further apart than that but for now what I want to do is make sure that the ones that I do say survive so if I pull it you know pull it down to where all I've got is one plant every foot or so then I may end up with some that die off as you know bugs get to them and so on and so forth so rather than do that I'm gonna leave a few extras and I'll have to thin one more time to thin it down to where I want it at that's a nice one there yeah, just put your fingers down right around the plant and you pull the, the root out from the one that's there without having to worry about completely decimating your plants. Now you're saying to yourself, self, why would you not just plant fewer seeds? Well, there's a couple of reasons. One, you never know what the germination rate is going to be on your seeds. Some years it'll be fantastic and everything will grow like this time. But the last time I did this, I didn't get anything to germinate. But like I said, I think they were old seeds. This is also a good time to be pulling weeds as you go along. Um, so um, I was concerned that perhaps kale was hard to grow from seed. It appears as though that's not the case. I actually not only um, planted a bunch here, but I also planted some in pots in the house, which are growing fantastic. And so I'm going to have to find a place to put all this kale or give it away to my kids in little pots. Which is probably what will end up happening as both my older children have their own gardens and then we got some containers here for my youngest this doesn't take too long it's not a real drawn out process or anything depending on how big your rows are of course you know I am not trying to grow commercially I'm not looking to sell my produce I'm growing for my family so, anything I get is uh, just eaten here locally. So having too much, um, not a huge problem, because basically anything you grow in the garden that you don't want can always be made into compost. Um, and when it comes to the seeds, you're going to get so many in a pack no matter what. So, and like a, the other thing I had an issue with, pretty sure what I had was old seeds. So my old seeds um, didn't work so well um, last year when I planted them. Now kale is an acquired taste. If you don't like kale, then don't plant it. Um, but if you like the taste of kale, it is a fantastic green, has a lot of good nutrients in it. Um, but the cool thing about it is it will grow in the summertime. It likes the heat, or it seems to. It did in the last few years I've planted anyway. Um, and so now, if you plant this, like I'm going to say I planted this first part of April, then once the lettuce all dies back, cabbage dies back, um, you've got a source of greens pretty much um, year round. The last uh, kale that I actually grew, I didn't get anything going last year. Uh, for some reason it all died back, I don't know if it was bugs or frost or what happened. But the last batch I grew, grew for 
about two years. Uh, and I managed to get some starts from my kids by taking uh, the kale uh, and just basically sticking it in the ground and keeping it wet. I tried to do a little more of that, um, but they didn't take because I didn't keep them wet enough. I got distracted by a video game and did not keep up in my garden as much as I should have last year. So we're trying to do better this year. But I want to tell you, that's the way things work. Life happens. All right, so now you can kind of see about how far apart I've spaced them. Like I said, that's about three inches for now. And then as they get bigger, I will probably end up with, oh, one, two, three, about five or six of these uh, dinosaur kales in here. Like I said, I got some in pots. I'm going to plant them in uh, some of my uh, wood chip gardens. All right, that, opposed to that, now that's a red Russian kale there, but it's the same thing. I'm going to have to thin that all out um, because if I don't, most of that is not going to grow well. So we're going to thin that out. That's another one. That takes about as much space. It grows lower to the ground and is a little bushier. This one, I noticed, the lacinato kale, seems to grow taller and then puts off a lot of side shoots. So. All right. All right, so over here, I have my carrots. Now, you may notice that I did not thin my carrots. They are packed in there real tight. Now, one of the reasons I don't necessarily thin all my carrots, which you probably should, is again this is not for market so i don't have to have pretty nicely shaped you know even length carrots my carrots are for my house and my kids so i don't mind if they get a little squirrely they will grow as you can see they're doing just fine down in there all right still not quite big enough to eat but they're getting there all right so i'll pull them up when they get just a little bit bigger than this and then we'll eat them in the house. They're still really good, even this young. They're still really good. Um, and what I do is I, I thin them by pulling them, by eating them. So that gives me a lot more carrots in a smaller space than what I would have if I just thinned them out to the perfect distance and tried to grow um, very pretty, um, straight, and uh, you know, uh, evenly formed carrots. So. That's how I go about thinning my vegetables. Um, if you got other ideas or, or you believe that I'm doing it wrong, please feel free to comment. Let me know what you think. Um, but that's how I do it. <clears throat> and so far, it's been working pretty well. Haven't had any major issues. So I will probably continue to do it that way. All right, well, thanks once again for stopping by. Like, subscribe, let me know what you think. And grow something.